about sound, I have sort of a pretty particular way of thinking about sound, um, which has developed over time. I didn't really think about it this way uh, uh, at the beginning of the stages of, of my development, but uh, it has definitely become uh, my number one priority, I would say, over the last couple of decades. Uh, early on in my early 20s when I went to school and when I was sort of developing. I spent a lot of time on the instrument, working on technique, and you know, once I started playing jazz, working on that aspect and creativity and language and many different things. Uh, and it wasn't until I finished, you know, I, I finished going to college that I started thinking seriously about, uh, you know, what it meant to be able to produce a, a quality sound and all it took, what it took to uh, be able to do so. Uh, and ever since then, it's pretty much been my number one, the number one thing that I work on. And I think about sound in two different, sort of like, there's two different parts of it. So there's the physical aspect of the sound, which means uh, the way we use our bodies uh, to produce a sound. Like in the case of the saxophone, there's very specific parts of our body, our diaphragm, our lungs, our oral cavity. Uh, Etc. And, and we need to learn how to use those things. You know, I mean, it's not like we use our diaphragm or oral cavity in every, you know, sort of like everyday activities. They're very specifically uh, used in combination. In this case, in my case, I guess, to uh, to play the saxophone. So I need to be able to recognize certain things, how certain things feel, how to make parts of your body react to certain situations. Uh, to be able to produce a quality sound. And it took me a while to, to figure this out, you know. But nowadays, a lot of what I practice is basically keeping myself fit, you know, keeping myself in shape so that I can respond to the instrument, you know, and the instrument is not sort of like holding me back in, in a way. The other part of the sound, the other side of it, is of course personality. No, personalities, uh, anything that has to do with, you know, uh, uh, timbre, articulation, uh, 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 nuance, attack, all those different things, uh, uh, vibrato, you know, uh, all, these, all these little things that sort of make a sound have a personality. Um, now, I, I really feel that they, these two things, they, they sort of need to go hand in hand. But you can't really have the personality if the physical aspect of the sound is not taken care of, you know? So I could be, you know, thinking about, you know, the way I want my sound to, to be produced and the kind of personality I want. But if I'm not able to control all this, the basic elements of how to produce that sound physically, it's going to be really hard for me to achieve that personality. So uh, I, I, when I usually talk about this, I, 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 I make a point on saying, you know, make sure, that, make sure the physical part of it is taken care of. And then the personality thing is just gonna come naturally, you know, by listening and, and kind of infusing the sound with your influences and the stuff that you like. We all go through periods of, of hero worship and uh, emulating the people that we like, and that's part of what uh, influences our sound, you know? Uh, but there's no way two people can sound the same, even if they're playing the, the same instrument, the same mouthpiece, you know, it's, it's really like we all have a very specific kind of thing that we can produce, and what we're really trying to do is tailor that product uh, and make it as good as we can make it, you know, we'll get to the point where we can control it so we can put the sound out at the highest quality we can produce. Um, and having said that, you know, uh, 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 I really believe that that has a lot more to do with comfort than to than, than with sound specifically. You know, I think you can find a, a great saxophonist like Charlie Parker or Cannibal or Sonny Rollins or so many others who have amazing sounds um, and have them play different horns. And you might notice little nuances, but the sound is going to be the same because the sound is really dumb. And the reason why they decided to play one horn or another is, is just to feel more comfortable. And you feel better, 
you play better. That's kind of how it is. So in my case, I just really try to find things in terms of setup that make me feel comfortable, that make me feel that I can produce my personality and be who I am, you know? Uh, and, and that's gonna make me, you know, feel better and hopefully play better and sound better. I think it, a lot of times it's sort of taken for granted the power that that you can achieve as, a, as an interpreter and as a performer by getting to a point where you can develop something that's only yours, you know, and, and someone can recognize that's yours. Uh, when we hear John Coltrane play, play one note or Miles Davis play one note, there's a very specific power to that, you know, uh, and it's something that, that myself and, and all musicians should, should strive for, because that's really, um, I feel that's the, uh, the sort of like the ultimate achievement that we can that we can uh, shoot for in terms of sound production. Being able to produce something that has quality, but also that can be sort of like immediately identifiable as as something that is yours and no one else's. You know, it could be informed by many things. It could be informed by other players or your experiences or the music you listen to or you know whatever's going on in your life. But ultimately. Uh, having your own sound and having something that you can produce and people can recognize should be the ultimate the ultimate achievement what you, what you should be looking for um, so yeah <laughs>